Welcome to another Airbrush Asylum video. In this tutorial video, I'm going to show you how I airbrushed this steampunk skull on a canvas. Let's get into the tutorial right now. Okay, I'm going to start off with some flesh. If you want to know how I mix this color, I'll pop a link in the description below to a video showing you how to do that. And using my flesh, I'm just going to give the entire skull a bit of a base tone. Now it's going to look extremely dark to start with, but that's because you're comparing it to the white of the canvas. By the end of the artwork, you'll notice that it just blends in. So just building up my tone. With the teeth, you can just go straight over the top. There's a, a dark spot in here, so you could just work around it and leave it. But if you do happen to get a bit of overspray on there, it's not the end of the world because the black's going to go back over the top of that and opaque it. So you can see I'm not worried about adding texture or anything in at this stage. I'll, I will do that as I go throughout this tutorial. At the moment, I just want to get this flat tone in. If it does turn out a bit patchy like this, don't worry about it because that'll just add to the texture. With the eye socket, I'm going to colour in that whole area even though I'm going to come in with some shading. But I want that base colour, that bone base colour to be in the background. And I'm just working on an A3 canvas, so I haven't primed this or anything. I didn't want to lose the texture of the canvas. So for anyone that's interested, I used a overhead projector to sketch out all of my lines. I did a bit of a uh, Photoshop layout for this artwork. I'm just going to coat that nose as well. But um, yeah, for this particular one, I used a projector rather than using the paper and making my own templates. You can do either. You can also use a, a more advanced projector these days. There's plenty of digital ones that are available. I've just got an overhead one that I've had for years, so. I just get the artwork on a transparency sheet and then uh, blow it up to scale and sketch around that. Okay, so adding yellow into the gun now. Okay, so with the yellow, I'm going to go over all of the areas that are going to have the cogs and the steampunk detail. Now it's going to look really bright that's okay. The way I like to work is always using a brighter color to start with and then I'll shade on top to dull it all down later. But by having a brighter base it allows those colors to really stand out and give you a nice punchy color and then once you shade over the top it dulls it down anyway so it works really well. Now, I'm going to go around this part of the monocle, but the lens I want to keep clear at this stage. So I'm going to keep that white, because so I think I'm going to make that green later on. Just a little bit of that yellow in around that section there. So that'll be the side of that bone structure. Okay, so using my sepia now, I'm going to further detail the skull as well as this part of the steampunk section. However, before I do that, I just want to go in and dirty it up a little bit, do some spattering. Around the edge. If you're not sure how I do this spattering and control it like this with the little paddle pop stick, you angle your brush down on there and then move the airbrush back further for larger spatters and up close for finer ones. I've got um, a few videos explaining it in a bit more detail. I'm doing this at this stage because if I do get a bit of spattering on the skull, it's not the end of the world. 
it'll actually add a bit of texture to it regardless. But if you really wanted to go crazy with it, you could, um, you know, mask up around it. There's some heavier ones there, which is cool. You can see I've got some drips there and there, but that's fine. Just to grunge it up a little bit more, I'm gonna use just some water, paintbrush, and I'm gonna drip some sepia in the water, like so, and then give that a bit of a mix, and then it'll be real runny, and we'll just put some of this on there, which will drip down a little bit and give us a bit of an effect. So when it drips like that, I don't want it to go right over the artwork, but I'm just going to dab it off with a baby wipe. The paint underneath dried enough that I can at least get that off. It might leave a bit of a smudge, but that's okay. Just trying to build a bit of a grunge background at this stage. Load up a few more of these. So you can see how well you can even use Trident with the brush. No problem at all. Again, just wipe that off. A little bit more up here. Maybe just a little bit more over here. That's going to drip here, but that's fine. We'll catch it. Just trying to get a different effect to the perfect smooth appearance of, of an airbrush. You can even come in here and remove a bit of the paint where the highlight should go. All along here. So just play around with different effects. It's always good to experiment. Now coming in with my texture template, I'm going to further add texturing around it. I'm going to move the template while I spray. As well as lay it flat. So this will give me different effects. When I move it, I'm going to get a softer blend. But if I lay it flat, it's going to be sharper. This will just tie everything in. Remember, this is only the background. Just didn't want it to be plain white, boring. So just adding a bit of a cool grungy texture. And this template is part of the Texture Effects 1 series by Gerald Mendes. A bit heavier on the edges, almost done. And I might just darken off a little bit of these corners. Okay, so now it's time to use the sepia and begin to detail the actual skull. Using some of my templates just to pick up a nice sharp edge. And notice how I just raised that template a little bit. That's going to give us a softer edge there. I can still come in and sharpen it if I need to. Maybe just along this part here, a little bit of contrast. Again, this is another template from my fire tool template set, but not only handy for fire, they also work for a multitude of different artworks. So I've got a reference that I'm using for the skull, but I'm changing it as I go. So just, you can follow along as is, or you can tweak it, whatever you like. Back to the template, get a bit of texture in there. So these spatters I can just turn into little bits of damage and cracks in the bone. Hence why I wasn't too concerned. So by using the ember, you can see you can make like little divots in the bone really easily.
deliberately spidering out on certain shadows. Another thing that works really well for these sort of softer shadows is get a bit of paper towel and just rip it in a certain fashion and then using that as your positive mask, just dust around, that's going to give you a softer edge which is um, going to be much nicer in some of these areas. I'm going to come back in with highlights anyway but you can see how that simple method will just give you a nice soft effect and you can soften it obviously more by lifting it but it's just going to give you a bit of that texture in the bone. And then you can do a bit of freehand airbrushing as well. Plus come in with your texture templates if need be. So just mix it up. Wherever I want it really sharp, either use that freehand template or I'm up nice and close. Pick up on this tooth here. The top of that tooth, I'm just going to use the template for that. And then further shape it like so. And then come back in with a bit of freehand as well. I'm always mixing it up. Whatever method you have to use to get the best end result is what you want to go for. Some areas on your reference will have an extremely sharp defined edge. Then you know that's something that you need to do with either a paper template or a template similar to what I'm using. And then other edges may be a little bit softer so you can freehand them. I mean, if you can get them sharp enough freehand, by all means, but you'll find that, I mean, I can go nice and sharp, as you can see, I can get it almost as crisp, but this is still sharper. So to give you that more realistic appearance, I think you need to mix it up with freehand as well as shading with a template. If you're not happy with the shape or something, you can always crop it back as well. So I think this tooth here needs a bit of tweaking. It's better. So you've got this tooth as a missing tooth. So paint that one in like so. Now you'll see that even though this flesh colour that I used to start with is appearing a lot lighter now, you'll um, once I add highlights to it, it's always a benefit to have the colour slightly darker because then your white's going to really stand up on top of it. trying to get in all these teeth, most time consuming part, but you want to take it slow. So if you're not happy with any of the shapes, I just cleaned that one up a bit. Just go back over the top of it.
bit too rounded, so just knocking the tops off those. Now I'm just going to fill in this gap within the teeth. You can see how it gets a little bit wet in spots because I'm running the paint reasonably thin. So I'll keep moving around to let that section dry and then recoat over it in a minute. Building up a bit more texture. So need another sharp edge along here. Add some more detail, bit of texturing. I'm going to add an eye socket in here because I'm going to have the lens sitting over the top. Don't want to darken it off too much. Just want it to appear as though you're looking through and you can kind of see the socket in amongst that. A bit more texturing in amongst here. 
So to continue your learning, be sure to check out some of the other videos and playlists that I've got listed here. And until next time, go grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork yourself, and I'll see you again very, very soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.